Hello everyone and thank you to Forum for Social Innovation Sweden and Malmö University. I would like to start off by directly relating today's conversation to the word of previous keynote speaker Jeff Mulligan and state that the countryside has always been a place of radical imagination. My personal love affair with the countryside began when I took part in the research and design of Countryside the Future, an exhibition by architecture firm OMA held at the Guggenheim Museum in New York City. It was there where I researched about the parallel depictions of ancient Roman and Chinese peripheries, where the dialogue between the city and the countryside defined the meaning of each. The Romans described the countryside as Otium, a place for free time away from the military and political services of the city, while at the same time in China of 3rd century BC, the term Xiaoyao positioned the countryside as a place of superior liberation, where men give up the official constructs of the city and give in to the rules of the natural world. Centuries later, into modern times, the countryside remained a place of escape, leisure and imagination as seen by the hippie communities in the American countryside where utopian idealistic young people suffocating from the city broke social norms living off-grid. The exhibition also brought into light how 20th century world leaders were creatively experimenting with the countryside and politically redesigned it in vast efforts to improve its accessibility, efficiency and profit. Stalin's USSR, for example, planted massive green shelter belts to protect agriculture from wind and drought and increase crop yields. Similar efforts were made in the US by FDR, who planted hundreds of millions of trees to create shelter belts from the Canadian border all the way down to, to Texas. And in Europe, imaginative efforts were made to reshape the peripheries, such as the Atlantropa Master Plan by Hermann Sergel, to transform the Middle East into an industrial hub using bridges and dams to dry the Mediterranean Sea and create an inland connection between Africa and Europe. Unfortunately, towards the end of the 20th century, we no longer see the countryside as a place of imagination and human intricacy, and we begin our obsession with one form of civilization, which is urbanity. Backed up by the 2007 UN declaration that by 2050, 70% of us will be living in urban territories, the city became everything. Driven by globalized, colonizing, capitalist architecture, the countryside became the back of house of our cities, meant to only serve the needs and demands of our growing metropolitans. The countryside was in fact commodified for the city and became a rigid, systemized, impersonal place without ground, sun or humans, often monochromatic and fully enclosed. What happened in the past 100 years for our global peripheries to change so radically and more importantly, how can we retrieve our imagination? In my personal research, I'm focused on the impact of climate change on the countryside, and I would state that the neglect of our peripheries is directly connected to the degradation of our natural environments. The climate crisis is impacting the informal peripheries in magnitude sometimes greater than its impact on our formal cities. In the Siberian countryside, for example, Throwing permafrost has catastrophic implications for indigenous communities impacted by land deformations, such as explosions of methane gas, sinking craters, infrastructure damage, building collapse, coastal erosion, and agricultural land degradation. In the other side of the world, the peripheries of Mexico City are on the verge of an acute water crisis. As a Paul Katz research fellow, I investigated how Mexico City has entered a state in which, on one hand, there is a great need for public work, housing, and service infrastructure for the peri-urban poor, and on the other hand, huge pressures are being placed to conserve the surrounding environment and preserve the city's sinking aquifer. In a sense, Mexico City is in a constant battle between architecture and nature, between the need to urbanize the countryside and the desire to conserve and restore it. But I'm not here to present battles, but rather search for the opportunities for redefining peripheries, in the hopes of defining the countryside as a place of imagination, innovation, and optimism, a place of re-implementing new ways of cultivating and harvesting, as seen in the American Midwest, where farmers are applying remote sensing data to industrial and regenerative agriculture, a place of reinventing technology that offers new ways of planting and providing food, as seen in Dutch universities developing data-driven concept of ancient farming and artificial ways of growing plants without sun or soil, 
A place of rethinking new tools, such as digital pioneering and entrepreneurship, is seen in the Kenyan countryside, where community-led ad hoc products are invented to sustain villages' private banking or transportation and prevent villages from total urbanization. A place of reinvigoration is seen in the repopulation of abandoned Italian villages Riace and Kamini, who are brought back to life by resettled refugees from the Middle East. And with those examples, my hope is that we can avoid ignoring the countryside and see the possibilities of defining our global peripheries as places of healing, regeneration, justice, and imagination. Thank you. <laughs>